Hey folks, this week we talk with Andy Piper about Mastodon. There's a new release, 4.3, with all kinds of new tools. We get into the philosophy of Mastodon, the cool things that you can do with it, and more. You don't want to miss it, so stay tuned. This is Floss Weekly, episode 805, recorded Wednesday, October the 15th. Mastodon, bring your own algorithm. It's time for Floss Weekly. That's the show about free, libre, and open source software. I'm your host, Jonathan Bennett, and we've got something fun today. We're talking with Andy Piper about Mastodon. And of course, it's not just me here. I've got a co-host today, Jeff Massey. How are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing good. Doing good. Happy to be here. I appreciate you sort of you- sort of stepping in at the last moment. Um, I've, I've had a, a bit of a health issue that I've been battling through for, well... In retrospect, over a month now, but uh, past week or so was real interesting. So things got a little behind, but we're here. We made it, and I appreciate Jeff being here. Well, I'm just honored to be on the short list to be able to <laughs> fill in, and you know, I, it's it's sometimes hit and miss based on you know my day job, but mm-hmm. the, I the stars that. aligned, had an had an opening, and uh, said sure, be yeah. glad to help. Very cool. Now today we're talking with, like I said, Andy Piper about Mastodon, and uh, Jeff, do you have a Mastodon account? I do not. Okay, so um, I, our, our I, goal today, is, our goal today, is to talk Jeff in to going and getting a Mastodon account somewhere, <laughs> <laughs> or host it yourself. Yeah. Like that's even an option. That's one of the beautiful things about Mastodon. If you really wanted to, you could prop your own account up somewhere. Well, and you know the interesting thing is I've heard about it quite a bit, but I haven't done a lot of research. I'm not an expert in it, so I'm, I'm really curious to find out. You know all the. I, I know the high level stuff, but I, I, you know, a little under the hood and kind of what's going on and, you know, where's it been? Where's it going? The whole, the whole nine yards. Yeah. And that's definitely part of something we're going to talk about because Mastodon just had a new release. Um, and I, you know, I don't remember what the version number is. It's uh, 4.3, Mastodon 4.3. And we've got the man that knows about it. And uh, let's go ahead and just bring him on. Uh, that's Mr. Andy Piper, and uh, first off, we sure appreciate you being here. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Jeff. I'm I'm really, really excited and honored to be on a show which is not only uh, all about free and open source software, which I'm a huge advocate of, uh, mm-hmm. Floss Weekly, uh, uh, but also on Hackaday, which is another one of my favorite sites. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the things I do is I have a small maker studio here with my wife in the UK, and uh, you know, I'm on Hackaday literally all the t- all the time, every day, uh, checking stuff out. So, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, we we appreciate you being here. And now I've got to I've got to ask. Maybe I'm jumping a little too far ahead. But what's what's the stuffy? What what is the is that an this, elephant? This is uh-huh. our brand new, uh, just launched. Uh, although we've been talking about it for gosh months, I think because we've been through the whole process. But this is our Mastodon plushie. Uh, it's available now in the Mastodon store. Depending on your geography, we are working hard to make sure that as many folks can have their own. Look at this. Look, see, see how squishy he is. Um, but um, I was away this weekend um, for reasons. Um, I was actually at Og Camp, which is something you talked about here mm-hmm. on Floss Weekly a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I got back to the studio um, Monday morning, and my new uh, my new work supervisor, let's say. Uh, was here waiting to keep an eye on my contributions to the Mastodon project. Um, yeah, really excited. It's it's a lovely plushie, and also got to give a shout out to uh, Dopper Two, who is our um, designer. So they've done all of the artwork for Mastodon. So you can see the lo- the Mastodon here. Not not this. This is this is something different. <laughs> uh, the Mastodon logo on my shirt here. The the Mastodon mascot, um, and all of the beautiful artwork we have around our website. Uh, is is by uh, somebody who who I know only by username Dopper Two, um, and that that's obviously the mascot, um, the plushie. So, yeah, super exciting. Is there also a rock band that goes by the name Mastodon? There, there is indeed a rock band called Mastodon, <laughs> yeah. uh, and so there is sometimes a little bit of uh, <laughs> search confusion depending on what you're looking for. But if you're looking for the Mastodon social network then uh or, or the social networking software then that is us uh and uh, mastodon is also a rock band uh that's fun so no, you, want, no. you want to search for mastodon social to get you guys that's fun that's the one exactly <laughs> right yeah yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> if you're on a website uh, no, uh, that looks like heavy yeah. metal and has whales, you're on the wrong place. <laughs> uh, I'm just reaching down over here because I also have got a little 3D printed mast- Mastodon mascot key ring that I've uh, I made myself uh, nice. over here. They, these are not available to buy, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of fun with the, the mascot. It's really really cute. Is the the 3D printer file out there so people can do their I, own? I, so not at the moment because again, you know, it's, it's done by our designer. I don't have permission to to share that. So uh, we, we'll see whether we can do that in the future. We'll we'll, we'll figure that out. There'd be there'd be a lot of fun actually to have that available. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so well, you say with the? Oh, I was going to say with the rock band. Is there any naming conflicts? I mean, not counting search, but any legal kind of. Uh, 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 Look, I, I, I am not aware of anything like that. Uh, I am not a lawyer, so I, uh, I can't comment. On, I, but I, I'm certainly not aware of any problems around that. You mean trademarks? But cer- certainly yeah. open source pro- projects don't have problems with trademarks. Nobody <laughs> would fight over stuff like right that. Now. Let's not go there right now. <laughs> Andy, I'm so glad you're here because if you weren't here, that's what we were going to talk about. And I was not looking oh, forward to that. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Uh, um, so let's uh, let's talk about Mastodon. Uh, you guys just sure. had a new a new release, and uh, what version four point three? What's what's the 4.3. big what's it, what's new in four point three? What's the what's the roadmap? What did it look like? What new stuff did we get? What new fun things can people do? So first of all, I want to say that it's taken about a year to get from four point two to four point three. Um, there's a ton of moving parts. We've got kind of the core engine of Mastodon. We've got the the web front end. We've got uh, our own Android and iOS apps uh, as well. Uh, and then there's an API, which means that anybody can build their own uh, third-party client apps if they want to, for either for um, you know Android and iOS, because they, they prefer to, to build something for themselves, um, or uh, for other platforms that we don't currently have apps for, which is pretty exciting. Um, and when we think about what's new, there's there's kind of the new stuff that you get as a user, which is really cool. There's also a bunch of new stuff that if you want to run your own Mastodon instance, because you don't have to come to um, an existing Mastodon instance, you can run your own for you and your friends or your mm-hmm. community. Hackaday.social. Mm-hmm. Very excited to see that Hackaday have their own Mastodon instance. Probably needs to be updated need still. To, <laughs> need to persuade Elliot. I think he, he may be the one that runs it to, yes. to just uh, refresh that up to 4.3. And then also there's some new stuff for developers. So uh, Mastodon 4.3 for users. Um, Gets a nice new look and feel. It's it's an evolution of the look and feel, but it's really nice and consistent. Um, we've done a lot of cleanup improvements around around the user experience, um, especially around the media support. So you can now do things like drag if you want to attach a bunch of images to your post. You can drag and drop those in the composer to reorder them. Uh, we've got also uh, group notifications. So if your if your post gets really popular and you suddenly start getting loads and loads of boosts or likes, then those things will be uh, grouped together. The other thing that's really useful, I find, in, in notifications in 4.3 is the ability to filter notifications. So you can do things like uh, filtering uh, out, if you want to, uh, brand new accounts um, or uh, or from domains uh, and things like that. So uh, So there's some really nice stuff there. Another cool thing is you can now add a little tag to your blog posts, uh, Fediverse Creator. It's an open graph tag that you add to the top of your page. And then that will add, when you share a link uh, to your post, then that will add a little uh, a credit, an author credit under your uh, link card. So that will enable people, if people are sharing your blog posts or for uh, writers and journalists, uh, if post, people are posting their, their stuff on, on Mastodon, then uh, it gives a little link to their Mastodon profile so you can discover them and go and find out what they've been talking about, which is really cool. Um, the embedded posts have been updated as well, so they look a lot nicer. So that's kind of a lot of the stuff for users. Um, that's in the, in the default web interface. Incredible work, really, by our, by the, the very small but, but dedicated engineering team that do most of the work on the core team. Uh, and then there's a load of stuff for admins and, and developers as well. Yeah, very cool. So that sounds really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm pretty new to Mastodon. And yeah. Never, never used it. And just, <laughs> okay. just a little background. I'm 
more of a hardware person. I, I'm an <laughs> right. open source enthusiast, right. but not fully informed. So I handle some of the basic stuff for Jonathan, like asking, like, it, at least the 10,000 foot version, the very, very simple, how does it work if everybody runs their own servers? How, how does, mm -hmm. how do they connect and talk and? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I mean, the, the, the easiest way to think about this and the way that a lot of people talk about the Fediverse or these, this, this decentralized system we have um, is email, right? So easiest, easiest way of thinking about it, you might be at outlook.com and another person might be at Gmail, but you can still send messages to one another, right? So it's, it's very similar to that. We have a protocol called ActivityPub. Uh, we have um, some internet standards. Um, there's one called Webfinger, which lets me say, uh, let's say Jeff at Hackaday.social. Uh, if I know your address is Jeff at Hackaday.social, I can go and find out where my server needs to send messages uh, or, or or where your your server exists. And then um, you've got a system of inboxes and outboxes, uh, which enable the servers to exchange those those messages. So that's kind of the super high level way of describing it. Uh, I can go into tons of detail and we can sort of do this whole seminar on activity pub in the Fediverse, <laughs> which, which is not what we're here to do today. Um, but that's, that's pretty much how it works right now. I've just been at an event this weekend called Og camp, which, as I say, I know that you talked about on floss weekly a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and I was running, running the crew for that. And what we did there was we had a, uh, a wall of posts from people talking about the event. And by the way, tons of hardware people on on uh, Mastodon Jeff. I, I've got um, lists of folks that I follow uh, who are kind of, in, I've got a group called Gadgets and, Ma uh, Gadgets and Makers. So I follow a lot of the kind of uh, Hackaday folks. I follow a lot of the people who you'll quite commonly see uh, sharing their, their builds and things on there. Um, but anyway, back to OddCamp. So I, we have this, this, this social wall with all the posts. Uh, and what I did for that was I said, okay, let's get hashtag og, og camp and hashtag og camp 2024, uh, and anything posted by the og camp, uh, account as well directly. So it was aggregating together all of the stuff that was coming through on Mastodon from each of those, uh, hashtags and aggregating them onto this nice wall that was in our main social room. So it was really fun. Every every time we have a Mastodon guest, this is a, at least the third time we've had somebody from Mastodon on the show, which is great, by the way. We're we're huge fans. Um, the the analogy gets made that it's like email, and every time that okay. is said, I kind of I have this bit of a shuddery feeling because I run my own email server. Oh, okay. and it's a terrible experience. One of the reasons is because of <laughs> it is anybody that runs their own email server will tell you it is terrible. Um, it's spam is one of the big problems. Yep. And with Mastodon, we also have to talk about abuse. Um, and let's let's talk about the spam bit first, and then we're actually going to talk about Matrix for just a little bit because they've had some of these problems too. But let me let okay. me just let me just ask you this: um, Has Mastodon had a spam problem yet? And is there anything new in the new release that helps people deal with spam? Uh, so Mastodon <laughs> does sometimes have some some spam issues, has had. It's got way better with 4.3, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, but, but let me just t d describe how that sometimes occurs. Um, sometimes if, you, if folks do run their own server... Um, and then they leave registrations, they leave it on the internet with registrations open, with no kind of capture or anything, mm. gating folks signing up. And then they forget about it, and then they wander off, and they, they forget that they've set up this container spinning somewhere in the cloud, <laughs> right? And they're not paying attention to it. Um, that is sometimes how that can happen. Sorry. What is, has got a lot better in the last 12 months in particular uh, are a couple of things. First of all, there's an organization... Um, called IFTAS, which is Independent Federated Trust and Safety. Um, and that is an organization, another nonprofit, mm -hmm. um, which seeks to provide best practices, uh, tools for folks that run either their own instances or small instances, small communities, provide them with some guidance, some education about some of the things they might need to think about um, around those kinds of topics. Um, they also have a service, I believe, called, which enables you to kind of get a 
uh, almost a default block list or a default list of of, of known very bad mm -hmm. uh, domains that you don't don't want to to receive information from on your on your instance. So they're a super super great uh, organization to keep an eye out for. Um, Mastodon, the 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 organization uh, knows you know we're we're in connect we're in contact with them, um, but that's a separate organization for, for Mastodon as a whole, and it works to uh, try to bring some of those good practices across the Fediverse, all of the things using ActivityPub. So that's one uh, element here. The mm -hmm. other element is in Mastodon 4.3, we've got these filtered notifications. So you can go in, and I did this literally did this in the last couple of days because my instance was the instance I'm on. Uh, McCall.social got upgraded over this weekend. Mm -hmm. So again, I came into the studio on Monday morning. I thought, oh, my friend Ron, who runs our, our instance, has upgraded us to 4.3. I went in and, and updated my, my, my notification settings. And I can do things like filter out um, posts from accounts that were created just, you know, in the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, don't get rid of them. You, you can either choose to get rid of them completely and never see them. But then somebody like Jeff might sign up right now or tomorrow or but but in the next I'm going to think Jeff's going to be going to create an account in the next few hours, <laughs> let's say. Right. Because it's going to make mm -hmm. sense. A lot of sense. And uh, he may he may post a post post on Mastodon and say, hey, Andy Piper at McCall.social. Great chatting with you. It's been great chatting with you, too, Jeff. I'll say that right, right now. But anyway, let's let's keep, let's carry on. Um, and I don't want to miss that, right? Just because it's a new account. So what we do, what we do is we have the option to filter those into a separate, like inbox, a filtered inbox. So I can go and look at those later and say, ah, oh, cool, Jeff's here now. I'm going to follow him, right? And I'm going to allow that, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But if I get one from some strange domain I've never come across, that may be one of these kind of abandoned instances, um, or that contains something that I don't want to see then you know i can i know then i can either block it or i can block the domain another feature in mastodon 4.3 which is really useful is because we're talking about these instances that are separate um, you can block individual users mute or block individual users you can also choose to block an entire domain mm -hmm. now if that happens between instances what that does is it blocks every account on the other domain now, if that other domain has, you know, um, a bunch of people actually you wanted to follow, um, maybe something's something has changed around the ownership of the instance or or, some, or the moderation of the instance. Um, then, if your instance owner, or your instance administrator, blocks that domain, you as a user now get a notification to say, "Hey, by the way, your instance owner just blocked baddomain.com." Uh, you were following four users at baddomain.com. Here's a list. You might want to keep a record in case they move somewhere else in the future. So we're doing a lot of work to try to improve these kinds of situations. Mm -hmm. um, you raised some really good points, Jeff. Um, I beg your pardon, Jonathan, about, about <laughs> running a mail server. And, um, uh, and yeah, um, unfortunately... We've learned in the in the history of the internet that, that some people do do some some silly things which aren't great fun for the rest of us who just want to have a better experience. But what we want to do is with Mastodon is really build a better social web for everyone and do that using open source technologies, do that using um, internet standards mm -hmm. uh, and protocols. I mean, you, you sort of you sort of know that your system has arrived. You've made it. You're in the big leagues now. When you start getting spam through it. <laughs> I, I mean, that's the other <laughs> argument, right? And, and, and that, that, that could well be the case. But th there are controls in place or there are got controls available to, mm -hmm. to, to manage some of that. And um, we are working on that. There's always more we can do. There will mm -hmm. be more we can do. Um, and, we, and we listen to the community and we pay attention to, to what's happening. Yeah, that, that idea of, of an old instance that allows open signups without any sort of protection against it, that very much reminds me of the, uh, the open relay problem with email. Yeah, and so I can imagine yeah. I can imagine a future where you you start having well you, you it may already be here for that matter. Um, you have some sort of a, a a blocking list service where this uh, server is a known open uh, relay. Therefore, we suggest that you block it. That's what Iftas can provide mm -hmm. to some folks, and that's something that we're looking at adding on our roadmap for the next version of Mastodon as well, that we'll, we'll have some better defaults there. But right now you can go to iftas.org 
um, and sign up for their forums and, and they can help you with those kinds of things as well if you're a new administrator. Yeah, so again, making the email uh, analogy, it's the equivalent of Spam House. Spam Hoss, however bit. they say I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm sure that, that Jazz, um, Jazz <laughs> Mike, Michael King, who, who runs that, would, would see things slightly differently. It's, but, it, but, it, but it is similar. There's some similarity for sure. I mean, there, there's enough again, similarity I mean, to make the analogy, I think, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, 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 and you're right that it's a sign that the Fediverse is taking off, that mm -hmm. we need to spend more time thinking about things like, um, things like this. Yeah. So let's, yeah. let's talk. I'll let, I'll let Jeff go in just a second. There's something else I want to make no sure worries. we get to. Um, let, let's talk about abuse. Like that's the other, the other big part of this. When you talk about blocking people and blocking messages, those are the two big things. You got spam and then you got abuse. And the, the tricky thing with abuse is it is not nearly as binary as spam is. Right, so an incoming message is pretty much it's either spam or it isn't, and everyone sort of agrees, looks at a message and agrees that's spam. Abuse, it's different because some people their tolerance for abuse is if someone you know has anything political to say, well, it's abuse. If someone uh, is supporting a candidate that I don't like, it's abuse, and like that's sort of like on the very very light gray area. And then you've got the extreme opposite is, and this is something that Matrix has been dealing with. Matrix is sort of the other federated multi-user universe out there. Um, I was I was in one of the main Matrix rooms, and I had to leave it because people were coming in and dropping images that I did not want to see. Like I don't I don't think they were getting to the point of being like csam um that's child sexual abuse material um but they were they were close like that was the direction people were trying to go and the matrix guys were just they were struggling trying to get a hold of this and so like that's the the very dark op completely opposite edge of of the abuse spectrum and not everybody agrees on how much of this is actually abuse and one of the things that i i love about mastodon is you can run your own server and you get to make that decision yourself. Whereas on the other social networks, you've got a company that makes that decision for you. And I just, I just love the fact that I'm asset on this, not the way it works. Um, and so I'm assuming that with, with the new version with 4.3, you've also got more tools out there to help people deal with that sort of thing. And so let's talk about that a little bit. What's, what's, new, what's new in the world of abuse on Mastodon? <laughs> well, 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 if I can pivot that, I'm going to include that in my answer. But sure. let's, let's pivot it and talk about the sort of the admin side. I gave you kind of mm -hmm. an overview of what's new for users and, and for people using Mastodon in 4.3, uh, particularly on the sort of the website, um, but also on, on the on the uh, iOS and Android clients. Um, so, so let me start with the the basics. So, 4.3, there's some upgrades to some of the underlying dependencies. So, we bump up, I think, from uh, Ruby 3.1 as the, the minimum to Ruby 3.3, um, and and a newer version of uh, newer versions of Postgres and and those kinds of things. And what that brings as well is better performance. Um, we've done some work to migrate away from and and, and deprecate. Uh, image magic for media handling, so we're now using uh, libvips, uh, and and that provides better performance. So th there's some sort of underlying stuff that's new for for admins there. There's also some better stuff around uh, metrics and management. So mm -hmm. we've dropped uh, deprecated statsd. We've moved over to open telemetry. We've got Redis Sentinel support in there. Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, we've got some other nice things with and some little nice touches like you can now customize your instance icon uh, so if you are a hardware community um, you can literally without having to go and uh, change uh, templates you can you can just uh, choose an option to, to choose what icon you want um, but but to, to, to address your point directly there are some features in 4.3 that help uh, related to uh, spam and abuse uh, for example moderators can now um, search uh, for problematic content using hashtags, which wasn't possible to do uh, previously. Mm -hmm. Again, we really, um, I think the, the administrator community, the instance administrators benefit from um, things like talking to IFTAS, getting some, some advice from them, getting some help from them as well. They've got some services uh, that they, they help to provide in those instances. But, um, but from the administration side, again, we know we can continue to improve and iterate here. Um, it's been a, been a year long um, 
process of building uh, the new release. And that seems like a really long time. It is a long time. The team's worked really hard. There's a lot of moving parts. And every time we think about wanting to add a new feature, it means uh, having to, to to make a choice about what we what we focus on and, and things we can't do straight away. Um, so, you know, I think we've added some really nice things. We've got a decent balance of keeping a, a nice, fresh, modern look, adding some user experience features, making it easier for folks to get started, uh, making things a bit easier to, to use, and then also helping administrators to manage their instances. Finally, there's some, some stuff, fe features for developers, which will hopefully help them to plug in and uh, improve the situation as well. So uh, we've done things like uh, really improving the authentication mechanisms for the API, um, and enabling developers to also, if you're using a third-party client, take advantage of those same um, notification filtering mechanisms that we provide uh, so so that, that they can uh, provide those to their users as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it seems like there's a... We, we probably need to here in a few months. We probably need to have the folks from IFTAS on and talk about this because it's it's fascinating to to. And one of the reasons it's so interesting to me is because every other social network does this very opaquely. You don't get to mm. look into it at all. And with Mastodon, just by its very nature, it has to be very transparent. And that's a, that's amazing. There's the, challenges with that, though. Um, you know, we can't. I, I think most instance administrators. We can't necessarily. You can say that these are the kinds of content and, and kinds of things that are okay on our server, mm -hmm. and you can be transparent about that. Um, I think that you, the way you get into difficulties, particularly with spam, it's back to the mm. spam assassin, spam house, you know, uh, Bayesian learning mm -hmm. kind of stuff. You know, as soon as you start to say this is what we are filtering out, right, then right. the bad guys can figure out how to to get around that. So. Um, you know, I, I think that's absolutely true, and I, and I agree with you that mm -hmm. one of the benefits of building an open platform, building in in the open, and working with others, um, is that we 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 have to be and can be much more transparent about those those decision making processes. Yeah. Um, but I think at the technical level, um, from certainly from my past experience at one of those large platforms that, that we've referred to. Um, you know, th th there are challenges uh, with, with, with how much you can share uh, in public. That's that's actually a very, that's a really good point and not something I was thinking about, although it, it definitely makes right. sense. It definitely does. I think that's, mm -hmm. that is something that, um, oh, I forget the name. That's, well, is, is it Spam Assassin that has some, some open source uh, tooling around that I, it, certainly you i mean i'm i'm going back 20 years when i'm when i refer to spam assassin i mean as well that I was think, when i ran my own mail server at home and, and that was a long long time ago but i think uh, that's still i think yeah. that is still one of the names in the business that do it and they they have that yeah, yeah. that same problem is that they publish some of their I, filtering stuff and so you can just I, grab it and write spam to avoid it there's another find organization the where yeah find the loopholes yeah exactly well that's 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 the the, the loopholes is the challenge um there's another organization that I'll mention um, because I think it's really important and it's another uh, demonstration of the growth um, and momentum of the social web and, and the Fediverse is mm -hmm. the Social Web Foundation, uh, which was founded by uh, Evan Prodromu, who's one of the mm -hmm. authors of the Activity Pub specification, and he's been really active in the Fediverse for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mallory Nodal and... Uh, uh, Tom Coates. So they, they founded this thing called the Social Web Foundation, mm -hmm. um, announced it about two or three weeks ago. Uh, and it really exists uh, and is supported by a number of players in, in, in this space ourselves, um, as well as uh, Ghost, Flipboard, a number of the platforms that are integrating with uh, ActivityPub. Mm -hmm. And it really exists to tell the story, help people to understand a bit more, because you know, Jeff, you, you kind of said, look, hey, I'm aware of the basics, but I'm not quite sure I, I get it all right. And and so the Social Web Foundation is there to help to tell the story more about we've got this opportunity as users to make our choices, own our data, not be beholden, to Jonathan's point, to the decisions made by those big corporates mm -hmm. that are, you know, very opaque. Um, we get it to the, the, the boring thing as users is that we have to do a little bit more brain work. And, and you know, my, my background, my degree was in history. And I, 
I have it. I have, uh, humans are incredibly lazy. You know? <laughs> we are we are the most lazy creatures. We will we will we will let you know. That, that's why it's sometimes it's very difficult to 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 make those hard choices to say I'm going to go and use something different. It's going to in, involve a little bit more work to learn, mm -hmm. relearn some 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 processes, some protocols, some the way things work. Because I'm so used to this easy thing that I was doing for the longest time. To, to, to get out and, and change the way you do things, that can be difficult, but there's so much benefit to it. And the Social Web Foundation is there to help to tell those stories and to say, look, you know, these are the benefits of using ActivityPub. These are the act these are the benefits to you as a user of owning your network. I've switched Mastodon servers uh, only once so far. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I know folks who've, who've, who've switched uh, more often than that. Um, and when I did that. I was able to go from one active in Mastodon instance to another, and it, it moved my network with me. I didn't lose followers. I just, they they were all, all of their accounts at a protocol level, the protocol said, hey, uh, this guy's changed his address. He's over there now. And, and all of those accounts refollowed me, and, and, and I refollowed them. And that was super powerful. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a really big mm -hmm. difference to, again, the, the way that um, some of those other networks work. So and I think that makes... Good. Sorry. I was gonna say, I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, as you know, Steve Gibson says, you know, so having good security is inconvenient. <laughs> well, having control of the social media is maybe a little inconvenient, but it, you know, you, you're better off because you have that power. And that's one of the things I do like about Mastodon is I know that you're in much more control of what you, what you see. And, you know, you, you you're not at the mercy of some conglomerate and you know there's many stories about how they've made decisions one way or the other that have upset people because wait a minute you're filtering things i don't want to see and as a mastodon user i could say well i'm really into hardware i'm into the software i want to i don't want to see cat videos <laughs> you know i just i don't i don't want to see any of that you know I, I can just block it myself and not have to worry about it um but one of the things i did want to say is like okay i'm i'm going to get a mastodon account Yes. Where I win. Where's step one? Where where did you know as as a so, new user So so go to you can go to joinmaston.org and there's a page for you to to find servers. By default, and this is this was done primarily to reduce that mental your cognitive cognitive load of making that choice. Um, because before, and it's something we've heard before is people would go to joinmastodon.social, uh, joinmastodon.org, and it would say, here are all the servers in the world, and you'd have to choose one, right? And that's the first thing that what, people tended to... What if I choose tend, the wrong tended one? To sort of, well, exactly, right? So, 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 so first of all, doesn't matter where you start, you can move if you want to. Um, in the future, you can take your network and or you can you can move somewhere else. So by default, it will it will suggest Mastodon.social, which is the the one that the, the Mastodon nonprofit organization that, that that builds the software runs, similar to the Matrix project, in in a sense, right? They've got Matrix.org, which is where mm -hmm. I've got a Matrix account. Uh, um, but if you if you want to, uh, you can go somewhere else. So for hardware folks, if you're into 3D printing, there's 3DP.chat. There's there's uh, there's bitbang.social, there's there's hackaday.social. Just saying, just saying. Maybe have a nice <laughs> yeah. chat with with Elliot and get that get that sorted. Um, but um, if you go to joinmaster.org, there's there's a service page where you can do things like filtering by by your geographic region. Um, that might be important to you for uh, data privacy reasons. Um, servers based in the EU may have different. Uh, data laws than those based in the, the U US, for example. Mm. Um, so it may be important to you from those perspectives. It may be a, 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 a topic-based community you're looking for. What I did uh, was I moved, I, I was on Mastodon at Social. I started there back in 2017 or so with my account, had a number of years there. And then uh, I ended up moving to uh, a server run by a former co-worker of mine, um, which is called McCaw.social, which has got a couple of hundred of folk, uh, folks that I, you know, used to work with on, on that, on that, on that platform. And they're all in their own places now. Um, but I know the person that runs that server. I actually donate to him. I give, give him some, uh, give him a small amount of money every month so that, you know, it, it covers the running costs, help to cover the running costs of his, of his server. Um, and, 
uh, and, and, and I know, you know, if, if it goes away, he would let me know because I'm giving him some money um, the, and, 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 you know, he would explain what was going on. And that does happen sometimes uh, with, with Macedon instances or Fediverse instances. Um, but that would be my suggestion. Another tip I wanted to give you, though, uh, Jeff, is um, one of the power moves on Mastodon you can do is follow. You don't can not only follow users and then needing to know who all those users are, although Mastodon 4.3, if you join a server that's running Mastodon 4.3, you get a, a slightly refreshed uh, onboarding experience where we will uh, help you uh, to hopefully find some some folks you might be interested in a bit more easily. Uh, we, we do a little bit of, of additional recommendation to, to, to help folks fill up their, their, um, their following list a bit more. But one of the power things you can do is you can follow hashtags and that is super useful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, you know, I, I follow a ton of hashtags um, for 3D printing, for ESP32, for MicroPython, for Lego, for um, events I'm involved with. And uh, and then if I see those things coming into my timeline, because I'll find out or there'll be a note, note saying why that's shown up, why, why I'm seeing this, uh, then I can actually go and choose to follow that user. Here's another useful tip in 4.3 that I didn't mention earlier. In 4.3, we've got these little uh, hover cards on the web user interface. So if you see a post from someone uh, that you don't recognize, you can hover over their name and it's going to pop up a little uh, floating card so that you can get a bit more information about them, where they are, for example, or what their their uh, profile links are. Um, and that's in 4.3 as well. So again, we've really tried to focus on making it easier to find people that you might be interested in following um, or, or topics you might be interested in following. Thank you for that's asking really... that question because because it is I think it is one of those barriers to folks sometimes is either they've previously had an experience coming to Mastodon mm -hmm. and having that oh my god where do I start or um, they just haven't kind of kept at it and that goes back to my comment about yeah there's a bit of relearning to do here but it's mm -hmm. really powerful and valuable when you when you get into the groove and, and start engaging with it. Awesome. Well, now just say. I decide, you know, and I'm going to run a server as well. Yeah. Is is there any, like, legal risk or burden with that? Or what, you know, could I get in trouble running it? Or is California or Europe going to come after you for having people's personally identifiable information? <laughs> right. So, so look, the, the answer to that is it depends, I'm, I'm afraid. Um <laughs> I, I, it's the honest answer. I, was, yeah. I, I work in developer relations. I, I do my best to, to, to give those honest answers. Um, if you're running something for yourself, then you know it's about the same as running your own mail server um, in terms of like what's coming onto your server and, and, and those kind of things. If you're if you're running it for a group of people, your friends or whatever, or, or, or then you definitely need to be aware of who you're supporting, what data is coming in, um, and what the rules are, what the laws are. Um, and I can't tell you those. Um, mm. I, it's going to it's going to be depend on on where you where you're located. Again, I believe the IFTAS knowledge base has some help on those kinds of topics. Um, they've been such a great supporter for folks uh, running, um, building, and running the social web. Um, so I would definitely encourage people to to take a look there. Uh, and there are also people in their forums. Uh, who can also probably point you in the right direction, depending on your, you know, your geographic location, um, or so on. Um, but you know, broadly speaking, you can uh, spin up a, a container. You can uh, go to. There's a couple of uh, two or three hosting organisations that, that I can think of um, that that will let you sort of buy a uh, small bit of cloud. Uh, container to, to run an instance if you wanted to, either for yourself um, or for a group, and they typically will then uh, do what a lot of these organisations will do. They'll they'll charge you based on usage and size and uh, and how many virtual CPUs and all that sort of stuff um, that you you want and how much you might need to support the size of your community. Okay, well that and that answers quite a bit. Now you said uh, a little bit of cloud, so. And I, and I know it's going to be based on users or whatnot, but mm -hmm. say I had 20 users on my server. Do I need 
pretty powerful or will it run on a potato or somewhere in the middle? Oh, <laughs> now, Jeff, you, you actually, honestly, genuinely, you're, you're testing my, my ability to answer that directly. Uh, I'm going to go and uh, quickly go see if I can find, find that out for you whilst we're talking. But I don't have that in my head um off the top of my off the top of my head i think sort of for for uh 20 users you're gonna you know you're gonna want a, a fair a decent amount of media storage probably you know 50 gig or something um and uh and something like that i'm looking at one of the pricing pages of for one of the hosting companies right now i'm not going to name them because people should go and, and check those sort of things out um but they are suggesting that sort of for for a 20 active users uh that that would be their kind of mid-tier uh, package, um, with as I say, 50 gig of media storage and and something like that. But but please don't take my my off the top of my head word for it because I don't have it in my head. I've made notes on mm -hmm. other things we might talk about, but not those topics. I apologize. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you about something similar, and you you may you may have Go to on. hit the eject button on this one too. Well, no, I'm, I, listen, I'm not gonna eject. I will definitely help out and answer these questions uh, in, in a different format later. But but yeah, go for it. Uh, so uh, this is something we covered on Hackaday. Actually, you may have seen it. Um, it the the website was its foss which great website we we cover stuff from there from time to time uh and they they made a request please stop sharing our stuff on mastodon because oh, mastodon yeah. is unintentionally ddosing our website when one of these big places do it and what was happening it, it's it's a real thing i know there there's mm -hmm. there's more to the story apparently they didn't have any caching turned on for their website but what right. was happening was when someone with a lot of followers would would you know re do we still say retweet? Repost. <laughs> we would repost something uh, from the site. All of the federated. So in in Mastodon, you have this idea of, of federated followers. So like someone from your server follows someone from that server. Therefore, the server follows gets the whole feed. Well, when that happens, when that server, so when person A posts a link, a server B, where someone follows person A, will follow the link and grab it to get essentially a summary, if I remember correctly. But they'll do, they'll do a download yeah. of the website. And so what was happening is when someone with a lot of followers or a server with a lot of followers posted that link, you had you know dozens, if not hundreds, of Mastodon servers around the world sort of instantly doing a lookup for the website. And mm -hmm. it was it was taking at least one website off the air it was it was taking them down it was it was a ddos effect they were getting slash dotted by mastodon yeah um and so is that is that still a thing as have, have the mastodon devs i obviously you're aware of so, that have you all have you all worked yeah on i that? am aware of that no i am aware of that and because also i have my own small podcast uh, I, I do weekly and, and and that one sometimes has a similar kind of blip when i share our weekly episode uh, url um so look um it, it depends on the size uh, as you just kind of indicated and we are aware of it we're working on it we've got ideas something i want to mention since you bring this up is there's a new project that we've spun up um which is funded by um nlna ngi oh, cool. and uh it's called uh fediverse discovery providers and the reason I mention this is because there's a there's a there's an additional element to that which is called Fed Fediverse auxiliary service providers. It all sounds very fancy and <laughs> and so on. And, and and to be honest, it's not very user user facing. But the idea is that you might have these services which are not necessarily just Mastodon. Um, the, the, the Fediverse is all using ActivityPub. Um, we've got other platforms, Lemmy, which is like a Reddit sort of similar clone. We've got PixelFed, which is an Instagram similar style thing. All of them using ActivityPub and you can follow users across them and so on. Um, and we want to contribute to, to the broader Fediverse. So there's this project that we that we are working on that's funded by NGI, uh, NLNet NGI uh, search, which is Fediverse discovery providers, which will enable our in poten potentially for uh folks to discover content across different types of fediverse instance more easily it's going to all be opt-in um, we we introduced it at an event called Fed Fedi forum last month and the we're working on it in the open on on github at the moment now the reason i mention it is because what the idea of this is the a, a fediverse discovery provider could be an instance of what we're calling a fediverse auxiliary service provider 
and other things, the other things that Fed future Fediverse or auxiliary service providers might do is provide better uh, caching for, for, for situations like that that, were, that would, would prevent or mitigate those kind of situations. There was also something we actually added in the, in the previous release in one of the dot point releases to 4.2, which is that uh, there is, there's a bit more randomization of a delay between when all of those instances are gonna go start like trying to fetch the URL that's just been shared. So there should be less of a tsunami of requests that suddenly all come in in a, in a very short period of time. And as you rightly say, uh, I think the particular instance you were talking about with with its FOSS or whichever site it was, um, you know, they came out and said, hey, you know what, okay, we, we weren't caching um, a few hundred requests in 60 seconds, you know, most website servers are going are gonna to be equipped to deal with that. As I say, I know that the podcast I have, we are running, and, and it's, it's terrible, and I really need to fix this. We're running in a shared, uh, in a shared web hosting thing um, that that I haven't managed to spend enough time to get us migrated off of yet. So we only have a tiny slice of a of a of a, of a VM somewhere um, that that, some, that sometimes does that does happen, um, and yeah, it's on my list of things to to resolve because I can't do, even do things like upgrading PHP and MySQL on that particular instance because of the the deal we have with that host that's my problem not not anybody else's <laughs> so again we yes the answer is yes we're aware of it yes we're working <laughs> on it we we've got ways of mitigating it um definitely want to improve it in the future Spe speaking of the future we do have a question from discord and oh, from mash right. potato he says is it still the case that quote posts won't be implemented on mastodon Mm. No, it's definitely not the case. And mashed potato, if you go read the launch uh, 4.3 blog post, uh, which I think I sent to Jonathan to include in the uh, in the post later for, from Hackaday's perspective, um, if you go look at the blog post, blog.joinmastodon.org, uh, um, and look at the 4.3 announcement, you will see at the end of that, uh, there is a reference to what we're doing next. And this is a really nice segue into that, actually, because yeah. 4.4 uh, or whatever the ver next version is, uh, quote post is on the list. We are we're doing it. Um, at some stage, mm -hmm. uh, there was a. Uh, I think some some folks felt that, that, that this was not going to happen. Um, we we recognise the community wants wants quote posts, um, so that's something we want to do. We're trying to uh, talk to other again. Activity pub implementers. Uh, it's not just Mastodon here. The Fediverse is a is a collaboration mm. of uh, different platforms, and we want to do this in a way that that works and, and that is interoperable, um, that extends Activity Pub if if needed in in the correct ways um, to enable this to be done well. Oh, There's a ton of things to think about, but, but we are talking about it. That's really inter That's a really interesting point. So the quote post is going to be an extension to to activity pub I, I may have misspoken we, we're looking at uh, what i'm saying is we're we're looking at what we need to do to make sure we do it well and in a way that that, that interoperates with other uh activity pub uh services right right uh, so I, i'm okay. not 100 percent clear yet on okay. the exact data format that it's going to look sure, like sure sure it, it it might be an extension to activity pub but at the very least it it needs you, you guys need to think about the that activity pub back end so that brings to mind something actually really interesting about quote posts they probably don't have to be just mastodon posts right exactly so exactly. there there are right. a bunch of other services on activity pub but mm -hmm. there's there's picture sharing, there's video sharing, there's you know yes. Think think of a existing big social media service, and someone probably has an open source equivalent that works with ActivityPub. Yeah, and so this exactly. brings to mind this this um this is actually really exciting. This amazing thought of someone just posted a video on this other mm -hmm. ActivityPub thing. I would like to share it, and it is a repost. And if you click the right. repost, it takes you over to the video. Like that's super cool. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. It is cool. really cool. I, I love. I love. The, so I've got. <laughs> I, I think there's another element to all of this, which is that uh, we, as an activity pub, Fediverse social web community, can do more around uh, accounts because I've got mm -hmm. accounts on PixelFed, PeerTube, 
Lemmy, Mastodon, uh, my WordPress blog is, has got an activity pub plugin um, right. and so on, right? So you can see content from all of those places under, under my username at different domains. Mm-hmm. Um, I can reshare. One of the things I love is I can I can post my images on PixelFed. I post them on Mastodon as well. But if it's kind of more of a photographic thing that I want to exist in a picture fair sharing site, I'll post it on PixelFed and then I'll repost my PixelFed account, boost my PixelFed account into my Mastodon feed so people can see that. So I kind of love that interoperability. Mm-hmm. It takes some getting used to for people that are used to other platforms and the ways that things have worked uh, elsewhere in the past um but uh, for them in the past but uh i i really appreciate it i think it speaks a lot to the power of having this this social web uh, protocol and layer um but yeah look one of the things i try to do is i i, I try to attend when i can the uh, w3c social uh, web uh work uh, community group which is being reformed into a working group uh meetings and take part in their discussions i go along to something called Feddy forum which happens every six months which is independently run uh by uh, some folks and that brings together a bunch of the different projects that are interoperating in the in the social web uh, to talk about what's new or what they're building or how we can make things better uh on an ongoing basis so yeah there's there's a there's a lot to think about here. You know, it's not a quite just a question of can you just implement quote posts mm-hmm. tomorrow? You know, there's <laughs> we're a tiny team. Our team, our the, the, the core development team uh, is really small. We've got to keep the platform as a whole stable for lots of people, fix bugs and, and, and you know, solve problems if, if things get, get raised. Uh, we need to be we need to respond to them quickly. Uh, because especially in the age of misinformation and spam and all this other stuff, we want to make sure that there aren't too many vectors for, for, for bad actors to, mm-hmm. to, to, to misbehave. And we want to make sure that, that things are running well. So we're doing, we're fixing bugs and releasing patches to existing versions. By the way, now that we've released version 4.3, we'll be, we'll be retiring version 4.1 uh, in, uh, in the spring. Uh, mm-hmm. So six months after uh, the 4.1 series will be, uh, will no longer receive updates, but we will we'll continue to support 4.2 and 4.3. Um, we want to install, to, to apply, you know, uh, add new features. Uh, we want to uh, build for, uh, as broad a community of people as possible. And we want to interoperate with uh, all of those other platforms that are part of the the Fediverse as best we can. So it's a, it's a, it's a big, big effort for a small team. Yeah. So I've got to ask about something and it may sound like a troll question and it only a tiny bit is that's actually fairly serious. Um, Are we doing anything with AI in Mastodon? Is is LLM coming to it? All right. No. No, is there no, a future um, that you see where it could? And I, I think I think I can see a place where it might fit. But I'm curious, what do you think? Well, I personally could see a small number of places where something like an LLM could be useful. However, mm-hmm. it is not AI and in, in LLMs in, are not at all on the roadmap or plan <laughs> for the mastodon core team we are not in any way interested and if you follow eugene who's the founder <laughs> the ceo uh on mastodon he's very very clear that it's not something he finds acceptable uh he's that he's interested in uh i don't want to speak for him too much on that regard he speaks for himself uh but no i it's not something that we are going to be going to be spending any any time on we've got much more interesting problems to solve mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm curious what your thought is, Jonathan, my thought, and this is, I'm going to make it hundred percent clear. This is not me speaking on behalf of the Mastodon team or project, sure. the place where I could see it potentially two places. I could see it potentially useful. Mm-hmm. And one of them is already being done by a third, a couple of third party clients, which is, Interesting. uh, doing things like, uh, image descriptions. Okay. Um, Right, so so alternative text for images, where 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 the 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 the, the app would suggest that for you, um, but 
the the other one potentially would be some element of uh, recommendation or ranking but a lot of people come to mastodon in the fediverse to get away from algorithms mm -hmm. um again i I've got a very complicated relationship with AI and machine learning. Sure. Uh, I work in a maker studio. I do some stuff with generative uh, art plots, but generative art in the sense of running algorithms to generate interesting swirly circles, not <laughs> not taking stuff that other people has, have have created and mashing up another image. You know, so, right. so there's there's and I've written a blog post about that as well. So, right. so again, that's me speaking mm -hmm. personally. I don't think that that is something. Uh, that, that any of those things uh, are, well, I know for a fact that we have no interest in adding those sorts of things to to Mastodon. Sure, sure, and that's that's fair. You know, the 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 current um, AI craze, we could call it maybe it might be fair to call it a bubble. People have very strong opinions on it, and uh, I, I find that really fascinating. Um, personally, I am waiting for the bubble to pop so that AI and LLMs can become basically just another tool that people use as opposed to the big thing that everybody wants to throw money at right now. <laughs> yeah. I, th I mean, I think that um, it, it, it's, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, I've been in, in the tech industry for 20 years and uh, I think that, um, you know, we've been through a bunch of these waves, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I the, the thing that bothers me with it is the, the clear uh, intellectual property infringement, aspect uh in terms of like how all of this stuff has been built and trained yeah um, and i and again speaking personally i am very much struggling to come to terms with the way that the big tech folks have railroaded mm -hmm. uh their way to access to all of this data um and used it to train their models i i have problems with it yeah i don't but i but i do mm -hmm. find the outputs when you used well with an intelligent human brain, you know, interjecting and saying, well, actually, mm -hmm. that's nonsense, but these three <laughs> bits of information you've given me seem to be useful. Um, you know, I think, I think that, that, that it can be useful in that respect. So. It, we, had a, we had an awesome discussion. I, I was actually a little surprised at how good it was, but just last week we talked with one of the guys from IBM, and he's also working with mm -hmm. the, the AI Alliance, and just yeah. a, a really good discussion about some of these issues. And with 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 Mastodon in particular, it kind of gets back to, to one of my thoughts about LLMs and one of the things that they're really good for, particularly the conversational mm -hmm. LLMs. They work really well as a replacement for a search engine, particularly if you do things like in your prompt, you tell it to cite your sources, then it will it works very well as a uh, as a search engine and that is interesting and so you you hit the nail on the head the thing that I the really I was thinking about is in addition to you know just show me the posts from the people I follow just show me the posts from the hashtags I follow and then you've also got this option to show me the posts from all of the followed federated servers which is kind of like the fire hose there might mm -hmm. be a, a, an an in between spot there where you have an algorithm that says show me the posts that are similar to posts that I've enjoyed seeing in the past and I think that could be useful for people I, I think you're right, but let me give you let me give a shout out to some of the third party developers because mm -hmm. that's what I'm here for, right? I work sure. in developer relations. My role on the team, I'm not one of the core cool developers. I work with the core cool developers and I help to communicate what we're building to the third party developer community. So let me give a shout out to some of our awesome third party developer community. There's there's a, a web app called FanP P H A N P Y dot social, um, which uh, is a third party web app, uh, progressive web app um, that lets you, uh, you know, browse your Mastodon timeline. But it has a catch up feature, so uh, you know. If you if you're not on Mastodon, whilst all of these non-algorithmically sorted posts are coming in, mm -hmm. then you might miss them, right? But it, but it, but if but, but but I might want a summary of the last eight hours of interesting posts, and Fampy can do things like saying, well, you know, if that's had if if posts posts that have had more than five likes or twenty boosts or mm -hmm. whatever that might make them interesting to you, it can show you them in a time scale. There's another service I use called Mermel, M-U-R-M-E-L, which does something similar. It sends me a daily uh, email digest. There's another one uh, to, to, to highlight things I might have missed or, or links that have gone viral that I might have missed because I wasn't watching my Mastodon timeline at the time. There's another one called FediView, which does more of the 
uh, machine learning style, mm -hmm. LLM style ranking rather than just doing uh, cool. what is, uh, you know, what, what metrics to apply. So these are places where I think having a, a, an open API, a, a, a publicly accessible, easy to use API and having third parties plug those things in is fine uh, if that's what they want to do and the data is being used appropriately uh, and not just being, you know, churned into a uh, another LLM to, 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 to generate, you know, more, more stuff, right? And, and, right. and that, we know that those kinds of things can happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, you know, we as a platform, as a core team are focusing on making a, a, an easy to use, welcoming, uh, better open social experience for people, for a large number of people, for a broad range of people. Uh, so when there are features that are really good for power users, we may not spend as much time on those. We may delegate them to or suggest that third parties can go build those things um, that, that have much more of a niche uh, use case. That, 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 that Fetty wall that I used at OddCamp this weekend, that was built by somebody else, you know. Mm -hmm. They built that tool. We didn't need to build it into Mastodon directly. Not everybody needs to be able to, to run a, a wall of Mastodon posts at an event. Right, right, right. Um, so why mm -hmm. would we spend a load of time building something like that ourselves? Yeah, I, I've, I've thought for the longest time, and I was at first quite hopeful that Twitter was going to implement this with the changes, and they've only a tiny bit done so, and... and I guess I still have a little bit of hope for the future, but not a whole lot there. Anyway, um, I would love to see a social network where you can bring your own algorithm. You know exact. You know what the algorithm does. You have control of it over it, and it does exactly what you want it to. Well, and that's so sort of you kind of that's sort of Fed what you're talking about. What you're describing, yeah, yeah. Fed it, Fed of you kind of layers that on. You know, they they've got four, or I think, four built-in algorithms that they that you can choose from mm -hmm. um yeah look I, I i'm not i'm not opposed to that as a concept um I, a lot of people who use mastodon would be completely i believe would be very opposed to any kind of algorithm um, because all algorithms are opinionated in the end and have mm -hmm. some kind of agenda oh absolutely. if you are going to spend the time mm -hmm. thinking about your agenda for applying your own algorithm all good Mm -hmm. Right. As soon as that gets taken out of your hands but, and is, is run yeah. opaquely, going back to our conversation earlier, that's when things get can get dangerous or, or things can, you know, uh, be misused. And I think those those are those are dangerous. But yes, I think you're right. I think um, let's see what where the Fediverse goes next. I mean, there's a ton yeah, of interesting absolutely. stuff happening. Absolutely. So that kind of brings up, you know, how do you decide what's going to be next on the roadmap? Mm. I mean. Because you, you talked sure. about earlier, community, mm -hmm. you know, wanted something. I mean, is there a place yep. to to give feed feedback, or do you just survey, or what, you know, what's so, the, uh, how, how loud does I the mean, community have to be before something gets implemented? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, we we hear the community a lot, and we appreciate them, and and honestly, we do. It's uh, we've got obviously we've got the at Mastodon at Mastodon social, and we've also got at Mastodon engineering at Mastodon social. That that second one is one that that we've spun up in the last twelve months, and we're also now posting every month. We we share a, a monthly engineering update. It's our our trunk and tidbits blog series, um, which I I co-author. Um, so we try to help folks keep up with the, uh, the things we're, we're doing. Um, the last six months have all been about what the changes are that, that fed into the 4.3 release. But the other thing I'm very keen to do, again, in my role, is to showcase what the developer community beyond us is doing as well. So I always try to include one or two or three uh, fun things that other people have built on top of Mastodon. Um, we're on GitHub. Obviously, all of our development is on GitHub. Um, being uh, Floss Weekly. Um, I'm aware that other, other source control mechanisms exist. Um, we really appreciate all the tools that are available to us on GitHub, and we've used GitHub for a long time, and uh, we don't have plans yet uh, or, or any time soon to move off of GitHub. Um, but uh, again, we hear the community sometimes uh, who, who, who suggests that we do that. Um, <laughs> we, we, we hear, so we hear people talking to us on the platform. 
we hear people talking to us. We have a, a Discord for um, people that donate to Mastodon on Patreon. They they, they get access to a Discord. Um, and and the, the Patreon uh, donations also, they get a newsletter from us. I think we just posted one this week uh, to folks that have donated to us uh, uh, via Patreon. Um, we, uh, we have people raising issues against the project um, and raising pull requests. Um, We've got a small team of amazing volunteers who help us to do some issue triage around some of those. Um, but yeah, we, we need to manage uh, a lot of sometimes competing um, requests. Um, our launch blog post of 4.3 mentioned a few of the key things we want to improve in the next major release, which would be those quote posts and also uh, potentially subscriptions to block lists. Um, we also want to work on better long form content display on Mastodon. So figuring out as more blogging platforms and newsletter platforms start to build in activity pub support, we want to figure out better ways of displaying that content on Mastodon, which is essentially just a, a short form uh, service and, and it doesn't have plans to move away from being a short form service. Um, We've got a new iOS developer uh, who's joining the core team and starting uh, very soon. So you should see some improvements. Uh, we've had, you know, uh, ongoing improvements to the iOS app, but but you should see some more of those coming along soon. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, we're working on it is all I can tell you. We're a tiny team. Mm -hmm. And the one thing we haven't talked about, and I'm going to I'm going to make a uh, a play for here is funding, ah. right? We're a tiny team. <laughs> we exist totally on donations. We do not take investment from folks wanting to drive us in particular directions right. that we've been very clear on, mm -hmm. on, on not taking um, those kind of investments. Okay. So we, we are funded through donations. We really appreciate every dollar that is donated this year we uh spun up a 501c3 in the us to make it easier for you all to uh to to, to chip in and, and support the project um i will also say that um if you can and you use an, an independent mastodon instance do try to support that the running cost for that instance i do that with my own instance but the core team to keep us going to 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 make sure that the developers can eat and and live and you know uh and contribute to fixing you know critical security issues quickly um needs to be funded and and I, i'm sorry to bang on about it but um we do appreciate um donations and is the core team uh like full-time paid just working on so Mastodon? I, I, off the top of my head, I think we've got three or four uh, members of the team who are, are paid full time on the team. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a, there's about 10 or 10 or 11 of us in total, including, you know, uh, somebody who helps with dealing with um, uh, uh, sort of um, admin and uh, management sort of tasks. We've got um, folks also that run, help to run, operate our Mastodon.social, Mastodon.online instances. Um, but um, the, the actual number of people that are paid full time to work on Mastodon is very small. It's, it's three or four folks. And there's an annual report. I think the most recent one was 2022. The 2023 one should come out soon. And then there'll be one for 2024, which has been, you know, it's, it's a, it sounds really kind of, um, uh, simple to say but it's been our biggest year yet you know mm -hmm. i mean we've had massive growth the the the, the products come on and the platforms come on a long way um and uh you know we're trying to we're trying to make this thing sustainable and, and make sure that better social online experiences scale and can exist for for a long time to come so mm -hmm. yeah yeah very cool awesome i, I was and gonna I will, I, good well i was just gonna say i you can i am going to get a mastodon account <laughs> I will. I will do it. I, I know of a couple. Listen, of Jeff. Servers. If you need, if you need any tips and tricks, then and, and you want to get out, jump on a call with me. I'm happy to to give you some some of the kind of the the wizardry that that that, that leads you through it. And hey, also, just want to say, you know, you all can also, and I, they're coming to North America in the near future when we can when we can get our uh, our shipping sorted. But but in the EU now, you can get a plushie to support us. And and uh, you know, if you're missing. Missing, uh, missing your mastodons, <laughs> then you know uh, that's a great way to support us as well. 
Yeah. Awesome. I, I was going to ask about the uh, transparency and the funding. And so I, yeah. I assume that's what that annual report is. That's where people can go and see. Here's here, the money I donated. We, here's what it went to. We are a nonprofit incorporated in Germany, and there's a there's a there's a nonprofit board, five hundred one c three, in the US, and of of course both of those things require us to be transparent mm. and to provide uh, reports. So, uh, as I say, I believe the most recent one that's available on the website is twenty twenty two. The twenty twenty three one should be available. Um, and of course, well, that will that will be an ongoing thing. Yes, absolutely. All right, awesome. um, I don't think I'm a line item in the existing report yet, and I've been working <laughs> with the team for 18 months, right? So, um, and to be clear, uh, since we're talking transparency, mm -hmm. I I, uh, I work freelance. I do one day a week uh, I, of my life is is spent dedicated to the Mastodon mm -hmm. project. Um, I have a I have a I have a discounted day rate because it's a non-profit that I that I offer on, on for that and. Uh, and the rest of my life is currently burning, really honestly, currently burning down my savings. So mm -hmm. if anybody else in open source wants to hire me uh, for the other four days of the week, then then, then here I am. Yeah, very good. Um, maybe maybe somebody will. Hopefully, I, I understand that. I too, I, I, I'm in the. I have many. I have many irons in the fire. I do a lot of freelance work on various different things, and so mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. I understand how that goes. And when one of those goes away, or several go away, the the trepidation you feel, I I get that. I I, I, I also want to be clear. I want to spend all of my time on Mastodon, mm -hmm. but um, you know, um, I, I love I love this product, this platform, and I love what we're building as a as a as a, as a free and open source standards based mm -hmm. better social web platform. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, is there anything that we didn't ask you about that you really wanted to make sure and cover? Wow. Let me just spin through my list. I think we've covered pretty much everything here. I feel know? like we did get um, through it pretty well. I, I, I hope I hope you both are. Uh, I, I'm delighted, Jeff, to hear that you're planning to to give it a, give it another try or give it a try. I hope Jonathan, you'll spend a bit more time uh, interacting with us and uh, mm -hmm. looking forward to Elliot getting Hackaday.social upgraded and uh, seeing all those great it. hacks. I'll go bug him well, about tell it. it. Hey, listen, listen. The other thing to do, Hackaday um, articles should get the Fediverse creator tag uh, added to them, and then you'll get the little uh, author attribution. Uh, whenever a Hackaday link is shared on on, on Mastodon, mm. um, you can get the author attribution added if you're if the folks that have written that article have the Fediverse creator pointing uh, tag in the in the page pointing to their Mastodon account. Then every time one of their articles gets gets shared, they'll get a little find more from Jenny or uh, oh my yeah. gosh, my brain is blanking on on, on all the the great folks on on uh, on Hackaday. <laughs> Um, so Al and Elliot so, yeah. and me, Elliot, yeah. I, I, of course. Yeah. You know, I listened. I, I listen to, to your podcasts weekly, so I should know all the names. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited to be here that I, my brain is going blank. Uh, no, no, that's fine. Okay, I got two final questions. I've got to ask you then, and uh, that is, what's your favorite text editor and scripting language? Uh, Vi uh, and scripting language. Uh, gosh. Uh <laughs> I mean, I, I just I use Bash all the time. I mean, I, I write code in Python typically, but my scripting language would be, if we're not t t calling Python a scripting language, it's a programming language, I would probably say by, uh, Bash. Yeah, that works. I think either of those are, are uh, legitimate answers. Thank you. All right, Mr. Andy Piper, thank you so much for being here. We went, we, we took up more than an hour of your time, and I sure appreciate it. It was great. I I, I hope the audience have, uh, have stuck with us, and I appreciate you you both and and, and Floss Weekly and and, and Hackaday is a, is a match made in heaven, for as far as I'm concerned. So yeah. uh, this is this has been great. Thank you for for, for the opportunity. Awesome. Thanks again. Been wonderful. Yeah. All right. So the real question is, what server are you going to sign up on? Oh, that's a that's a tough one. Uh, you know, you got either, you've got either, Hackaday dot social. There's Twit dot social. Yeah. We're all good friends with Twit as well, and I'm sure there's some Indian motorcycle that you know <laughs> Mastodon server that's just out there for classic motorcycles. Yeah, there probably is, but you know, I I, I got to stick close to home, and it's e it's either going to be uh, Twit or Hackaday, yeah. one one of those two. You could do just, like I did and make one on both places. Oh, you can do that. I mean, oh. there's nothing stopping you from doing it. Now you can't. Of course, we let we let the man that knows the answer to this go before we thought to ask the question. But I I don't know of a way to sort of merge the two accounts on two different servers. But I do know that a lot of people have accounts on different servers to sort of keep their various interests separate. So just something to think about and see where that makes sense for you. 
True. Well, I'd probably at least just start with one and then kind of get get my legs under me and, uh, <laughs> you know, see see how I do. Maybe maybe give Andy a call if I need to to get the get the crash course and. Yep. But yep. yeah, I you know I I will have one. Uh, might take me a day or two just to work it work it in with my day job. But uh, yeah, get on there, get one, and then uh, I can I can advertise it like other people we know. Yeah, yeah. Well, make sure and let me know yep. what it is. If we do it before the show goes live, I can t- I can tag you in the uh, Mastodon post. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. It'd be I, fun. I will, I will do that. All right. Awesome. <laughs> uh, you have anything you want to plug? Uh, just check me out on in uh, twit.tv on the Untitled Linux Show. I'm there almost every week, and I talk with Jonathan and some other great people that co-host, and we just strictly talk about pretty much Linux. Though I, I do veer a little bit into the hardware, you know, benchmarking on Linux, the new processors and uh, some other other things like that. It's some little little of the enterprise. I, my my day job, I work in semiconductors, so. Mm-hmm. Yep. I uh, yep. bleed over into that, but no, yeah, no inside check me scoops. Out there. No inside scoops, though. <laughs> no, no. I, if, if anything's gray, I always say this is strictly what I've heard on the internet. This is not inside knowledge. This yep. is, you know, I do, I do not speak for the company I work for, and I don't mention them either. Indeed. Yeah, I don't think we've ever, maybe once, we've mentioned what company you work for on the air, but that's just, it's not what we're about. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Excellent. Li- listen to all the episodes, you probably figured out, but, you know. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you, man, for being here. I sure appreciate it. Um, we uh, we don't we don't necessarily know who the guest is next week, and so if you want to be on the show, if you have an open source project you want to chat about, or if you have recommendations or leads for us, you can shoot us an email. It's floss at hackaday dot com. Shoot us an email that goes straight to me. It's a it's a mailing list technically, but it comes to me, and we'll take a look at it and uh, get some folks scheduled. So we need the guest for next week. We've got. I think one guest scheduled through the end of the year. So let's uh, let's get the suggestions coming in. Um, but we will be here next week, whether it be a guest or a roundtable, and we will chat about what's going on in the world of open source software. Uh, also, you can make sure and follow Hackaday. You've got my security column goes live every Friday morning, and we sure appreciate Hackaday being the home of Floss Weekly. Uh, you can also check out as... As we mentioned, the Untitled Linux show over at twit.tv, and uh, I personally appreciate Twit letting us do that. Um, We appreciate everyone being here. Thank you for those that watched live and those that get us on the download, and we will see you next week on Floss Weekly.